Welcome to the CBIA BizCast. I'm your host, Ali Warshavsky, and today on our podcast, we're at Athletic Brewing, if you can't tell by the sign behind me, and I'm joined by John Walker. Athletic is a non-alcoholic beer that has really taken the country by storm. It was the 27th biggest craft brewery in America in 2021. Well, thanks to you and your team. Welcome, John. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. We're excited to be here. I mean, the growth of your company has been tremendous. And as we speak, we are actually in what is going to be your new headquarters. Correct. Correct. And it's pretty big. Do you know the dimensions? Yeah, so this new building is about 150,000 square feet, which is a, a slight step up from our original facility, which was about 8,000 square feet. And that one was in Stratford. This one is in Milford to uh, bring context to our listeners. What's really impressive is that this is a fairly new company launched in 2018. Do we count the two years in the pandemic? I don't know. Some of us prefer not to. Um, I know I didn't age since it started, right? So you had a lot you were up against, but in just five years, you're one of the biggest craft breweries in America. How did this idea of creating this non-alcoholic beer brand begin? Originally, it came from Bill Schufelt. He's the co mm -hmm. my co-founder and the original founder. Um, he kind of dreamed this up. He was in a really rigorous business life uh, had you know meetings and business and wanted to be at the peak of his per or peak performance and found that alcohol was kind of getting in the way of mm -hmm. his performance you know because he always had dinners and early mornings and trading at the middle of the night but alcohol was just kind of getting in the way and so in order to enjoy a good beer mm -hmm. and be at his peak performance he was like I wish I could have a delicious beer that could also be paired with food or something like that but there are no offerings out there and so it took about two years for him to kind of drum up the business plan. And when he got there, he and his wife discussed it. She kind of kicked him out the door, told him to go start the business. And that's when he and I met in about 2017. Mm -hmm. And we signed a lease on our 8,000 square feet and started a, a new process that was unique to craft brewing and unique to non-alcoholic beer so that we could showcase all the amazing materials that we put in craft beer. Yep in non-alcoholic format so everybody could enjoy it and be at their best so we have we have two <clears throat> different types in front of me are these the original that you started with you, i don't even know where you'd start like you've heard the brand names that have been out there for yep. years they kind of copy the generic taste of whatever um they that beer company owns but you guys have such a selection i mean you can go from this is an ipa which one's this here we've got the upside down golden here golden um you know what was your did you have like one that you just started with that took off or did you kind of um break into the market by having maybe three different types well, yeah, we kind of started at ground zero. You know, mm -hmm. we knew that craft non-alcoholic beer had to be recreated. Nobody had innovated in the space in decades. Mm -hmm. And because nobody was really expressing the flavors that people had come to enjoy in craft beer, we needed to start and develop a brand new process. So we started from ground zero, started home brewing in our new mm -hmm. space. And we actually started, up, started with this upside down golden because goldens are they kind of showcase all mm -hmm. your flaws if you're making them. So okay. it was a great way to trial our new process. So we spent about six to nine months, give or take, doing our trial and error, mm -hmm. figuring out our new process. And in that six to nine months, we landed on our recipe and our process for Upside Down Golden, our Run Wild IPA. And meanwhile, we developed a process that could really translate into the whole craft beer scene. So we were able to develop all of the flavors under the craft beer sun, from sours mm -hmm. to stouts to IPAs and light beers. So we've got quite the breadth. So over, I guess, if you can give a timeline of like year one versus year two, how many did you introduce? Was it pretty quick when you, once you figured out the golden, um, introducing five more, or has it been a really slow gradual build to how many you have now? It was a pretty gradual build, okay. as, as gradual as you can be in a, four to five year time frame. Mm -hmm. So we got the, the base. The golden down. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the golden and the IPA down. We launched, uh, we were commercial for a little bit, and then we learned that e-commerce was a really strong channel. Yes. So we started introducing new flavors through our pilot system on e-commerce, just to see what people thought about it, it, what they wanted, and it was a great way to get customer feedback. Mm -hmm. And so we started trialing new flavors there. That's how we came up with our free wave hazy IPA, which is another flagship mm -hmm. now. And so that was a great way to test out new markets and new recipes and new flavors. Um, 
So I think last year we did about 50 different brews. Mm -hmm. um, we've got an incredible brewing team on both coasts and they're developing new things every single day, coming up with wild and wacky flavors and traditional styles. So we've got a huge array now. What is your personal favorite? My personal favorite is probably the Run Wild IPA. Okay. It's, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like near and dear because it was one of the first, mm -hmm. but I also love, you know, some of our more complex sour beers. They're mm. super refreshing and vibrant and kind of challenging to make and yeah. fun. A lot of taste testing is involved, I'm sure. Tons. Yes. <laughs> so obviously we've been talking about this new facility. Do you know how many employees you have here or will have it looks like it's a pretty big space not sure if you're looking to hire more um, once you officially open this facility yeah so at the very beginning what we're going to do we're going to bring the whole team from the original facility mm -hmm. here so everybody's under one roof and working together and over the course of the year as we grow this facility we hope to have upwards of 100 teammates under this roof wow. alone um, and that's just in stage one We've got another stage where we can actually go from 180,000 barrels a year up to 450,000 barrels a year. Wow. At which point we'll be able to have a lot more people in here and we'll require it, you know, to get those numbers up. And you mentioned you have a West Coast location. Is it similar to this? What's done there? Yeah, so our San Diego facility came on in 2020 mm -hmm. um, and it is about the size of this facility as this is going to be on day one, mm -hmm. just a little bit smaller and uh, it's fully maxed out. It's an incredible facility, an incredible team, and we've been pumping out the majority of our beer there for the past two years. So once this um, is officially open, will you have equal distribution of the beer? Because you said you're mostly pumping out there. What about here? Yeah, so we're gonna be able to take back a lot of the inventory that they've been doing there and kind Great. of cut down on cross-country shipping, mm -hmm. which should help improve, you know, Cost. Cost and yeah. economics, and also cut down on greenhouse stuff so mm -hmm. that we can stop shipping across the country to ship back to the middle. Great. And, uh, you know, the, again, we spoke about the pandemic briefly, but did that impact you guys or did it almost help you? Because you mentioned the e commerce part of it. Um, how did you guys manage that, navigate through that? Um, yeah, COVID was certainly challenging, mm -hmm. um, but it also gave our team an opportunity to shine and figure out how to really do things um, kind of in isolation mm -hmm. and in challenging times. So at the very beginning, we broke our teams up and did shifts so that no operation was ever shut down. Nobody was ever let go. We kept production in full swing and we were able to grow throughout the pandemic. And we did some amazing fundraisers throughout it to help mm -hmm. like the National Restaurant Association, mm -hmm. Um, and so it really forced us and helped us organize and become a little more remote and figure out how to communicate, especially across country, so that we could keep ramping, keep growing, and supply the demand. Your growth has been pretty incredible. Time Magazine recognizing you as one of the most influential companies in 2022. How do you do that? You know, how has this growth been sustainable and how have you promoted that growth? I mean, everyone has these ideas, right? But to make it happen, to make a Times Top 100 list is pretty impressive. Yeah, no, it's an absolute honor and so cool to be alongside all those other leaders in mm -hmm. categories. Um, but I think it comes down to the team and it comes to just a passionate group of people who want to do this. We love what we're doing. We're making great products, but we're also making a huge impact in our environment, in our communities. Mm -hmm. And so it's really rewarding, you know, as a professional and individual. And these are experiences and traits that we can share and be proud to share with our families and communities. Uh, what we also have, we have a huge network of ambassadors and they're out there every day doing good work. Um, they're at trailheads, cleaning up, um, doing, participating in our Two for the Trails program. So we've got, I think last year we did about a million dollars um, in, two, in wow. two for the trails mm -hmm. where through a grant program, people wrote in and said, I would like to clean up this part of my community. And we would distribute those funds. And then our team would actually go out there and help facilitate that project. So we get real community, community engagement and it's rewarding for everybody. And you have some pretty um, famous investors backing you. Can you list a few? You know, how did you attract them? I'm assuming most of it is the athletic um, that 
want to be able to you know, do their next practice the next day or get up and moving and not feel the effects of an alcoholic beer. Yeah, no, we, ha we have an incredible group that's been with us since day one mm -hmm. and it continues to grow. And most of these people are just passionate individuals who understand our mission and our, our desire to make a really delicious product, destigmatize a category that had been stigmatized mm -hmm. for a really long time and kind of... Which is it, blah. Yeah. Alcoholic, non alcoholic beer, right? Yeah. Is that the, yeah, the stigma really, around it? Yeah. Yeah, and just, you know, make something that people are proud to hold mm -hmm. in their hand and give somebody a reason and the ability to go out and do good. Mm -hmm. um, is there anyone that you've seen holding an athletic beer that has surprised you and you just been like, wow, he's or she's drinking our brand? <laughs> um, 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 um. There was, I think during the Boston Marathon mm -hmm. last year, there was uh, an individual, we didn't know this person, and he was just crushing it in the race. And in the last mile, he snagged an athletic, and somebody at the same time was on Twitter capturing the footage, and he was just like, ah, and he was so excited. And it was all over Twitter, it was really exciting. Um, but in addition to that, uh, JJ Watt has been mm -hmm. an amazing supporter, David Chang, is incredible and super fun and we're super excited to be working with him in you know the food world and culinary aspects mm -hmm. and with these beer is there any alcohol at all like sometimes they have like point point zero percent yeah so our beers they're under 0.5 percent okay. so it's not a zero zero product but it's under 0.5 mm -hmm. uh brewed with almost all in all organic grains uh pacific northwest hops really light in calories. We've got our athletic light, mm -hmm. which is 25 calories, five grams of carbs, no sugar. We've got upside down, which is 45 calories. Mm -hmm. Our run wild is 70. So really easy drinking and you can drink them all day, any day. And what people probably don't know, and I only know this because I work in the fitness industry as well, is this actually will help with your recovery. You're getting some carbs in there and some fluids, right? This is what you the Boston Marathoner was reaching for to survive that last mile. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. No, it's delicious, super refreshing. We've got all the flavors for anybody to recuperate mm -hmm. anytime. And what's next? I mean, you guys have had so much success already in such a short period. Uh, five years from now, where do you see Athletic? Um, I think we have a lot of work to do in our home territory. You know, we're at about 10% of distribution in this country and we would love to be everywhere mm -hmm. and working with our communities even more. So we've got a lot of work to do locally. We've just started launching internationally a little bit through e-commerce. Uh, so we've got a lot of exciting partnerships out there mm -hmm. with Iron Man around yes. the world. Um, so a lot of exciting opportunity coming up. What are some innovative ways you've implemented to grow the business that you don't think other businesses might have tried at first? Um, I think one of the biggest ones was through our e-commerce channel. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give credit to Bill, the founder. Mm -hmm. um, one day in our, as we were launching, he was like, I'm going to start this on e-commerce. And I didn't even know what that meant. Mm -hmm. And he bought this table, this giant table, and then bought some boxes and started shipping beer out. And I started getting it. It was like five or 10 packages a day. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it was 150 packages a day. And now we're doing 2,000 packages a day. Um, and so I think one of the things that we found was super valuable is thinking outside the box. E-commerce is fascinating. Um, going into different markets mm -hmm. and different sales channels is a great way, but also building our team internally. You know, we're fostering an incredible team and building a community um, but we own the process top to bottom. And so we're able to engage with our customers directly, you know, so the customer experience really helps us understand what we're doing well, how we can improve, and helps us do better. Any flavor you'd like to see Athletic come out with? I mean, you've, you've hit a few. I'm a sour person, so that's awesome. I'm a sour person in the summertime. Mm -hmm. I do like our kind of decadent, rich brews in the winter time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we've got some exciting stuff coming out, some great partnerships with uh, like Laird Superfood mm -hmm. and some other projects. We did a partnership with Justin's Peanut Butter, which was a peanut butter mm -hmm. brew, which is Ooh. awesome. Yeah, and we've got great. some other fun projects in the pipeline. Well, that all sounds so good and like a great follow-up story. Indeed. Well, and I know that uh, you guys will be celebrating the grand opening of this in a few weeks, and we can't wait to see what's next.
Yeah, yeah, we grand opening, and we just had our birthday last week, okay. and we became a B Corp last week. Oh, wow. So, what? some big things underway. Well, that's great to hear. Well, thank you so much for taking the time for showing us your new facility and getting the inside scoop of what it takes to build a brand and be successful in five years. I'm gonna implement it, see what happens on my side. Sounds good. With what? I'm not sure yet, but. <laughs> Running. Running, yeah. Uh, we all have a lot of work it's gonna take more than five years to do that. But thank you so much for joining us on the BizCast and thank you for listening to this week's BizCast. You can subscribe and listen to more episodes on Apple, YouTube, SoundCloud, and also head on to cbia.com for more.